Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my marked as to read video for June. So it is time for another marked as to read video. If you don't know, this is a series of videos where I talk about all of the books that I marked as to read on Goodreads in the previous month. So I marked 16 books as to read during the month of June. So let's jump in and talk about all of the books and why I was excited to mark them as to read. So the first book I want to talk about is Devil in Ohio by Daria Politan, I think it might be pronounced. This is a book that I saw over on J Book Lover's channel. She mentioned it in a book haul and it sounds like something will be right up my alley. And it is a YA thriller about a girl whose family takes in this other girl to live with them who has recently like escaped from a cult. Cult, one of my buzzwords if you didn't know. And they take her, this girl in and she's living with them and then I think like the main character starts to feel like this girl's like trying to like take over her life and then some like weird stuff starts happening and it just sounds like a totally good time. The next book I marked as to read is Nikki Kill by Jennifer Brown. Now this is a book that I saw basically Michaela from Love Michaela Eve given a lot of love to this book on Twitter and she just had amazing things to say about it and I don't even really know that much about, about it except that it is a YA thriller, another YA thriller and um, I, I'm a bit confused about how it works, but I think a girl, she has senses that overlap and because of that, um, she can like see, she like sees things in colors. So like when someone lies or something, she sees gray or something. And then someone is trying to kill or has tried to kill like the most popular girl in her school. And she's trying to figure out what went on, I think. I don't even know, but Michaela was like real raving about it and it's a thriller, so already I'm inclined to probably love it. So I'm actually really excited about this book because it sounds really, really good. The next book I want to talk about is Fury by Shirley Ma. This is a book that I saw flipping through pages talk about in a love in a Love Oz YA recommendations video. And it is an Australian YA book, obviously, and it's one that I'd never heard of, even though it was published in like 2010. And it sounds really, really good. I'm just going to read you the, um, the synopsis because it's really, really short. And it says, like, let me tell you my story, not just the facts I know you want to hear. I'm going to tell you my story. I'm going to tell it my way. Strap yourself in. Eliza Bones has everything. A big house, a great education, a bright future. So why is she sitting in a police station confessing to murder? Like it just sounds real, real good. And obviously, um, Tanika had really good things to say about it and she was recommending it. And it being an Australian YA book, I would love to support it. And I've never even heard of it before, even though it's been out for like seven years. So I definitely would like to look into this one a bit further. The next book I want to talk about is one that I saw on a BuzzFeed article um, for summer YA releases. And it's not one that I heard like too, too much about. And it's called It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Sugar. And as I said, it is a YA release um, about, it's a contemporary story. And I believe it's about a girl who um, is starting to develop feelings for another girl. So it is a female-female um, relationship. And... I think it's just about her like dealing with that because she's got like a group of friends and her group of friends don't like, um, I don't think they have a problem necessarily with the girl that she's starting to develop feelings for, but they don't like that girl's friends. Like the two crowds of friends don't really get along and she's just dealing with a lot because she believes that her father may be having an affair and she's just like got a lot going on and I think it's just like a typical kind of contemporary coming of age, um, female female relationship story which it sounds really really good and I hadn't heard too much about it but I was intrigued by the summary when I saw it on that BuzzFeed article. Next we have A Million Dunes by Emily Henry. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling I believe or inspired by Romeo and Juliet and I don't know too much about it apart from that but I read The Love That Split the World by Emily Henry this year. I actually did a review for that book if you haven't checked it out I'll link it in the cards um, and I really, really liked um, Emily Henry's writing. I did have problems with that book that you'll see if you watch my review, but the writing I really, really loved. And I've actually heard quite positive things about A Million Dunes so far. So it is something that I would like to um, look out for and potentially pick up in future. The next book I want to talk about is Style by Chelsea M. Cameron. Cece from Problems of a Book Nerd talked about this in a Like This, Try That um, recommendation video and she compared this book to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli, which if you didn't know is one of my favorite books of all time. I absolutely adored that book and this one is a female-female 
um, relationship based, I believe. And if it was compared to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, if it's anywhere near as cute and adorable as that book, then it's something that I want to read. The next book that I marked as to read is A Beautiful, Terrible Thing, a memoir of marriage and betrayal by Jen Waite. Now, this is a book that I saw Derby from Derby Lane Reading talking about, and it is a memoir, but it is, is about a woman who, it's about like what happens after you discover that your husband is a psychopath. So I don't believe he's like a murderer or like a serial killer or anything like that, but he is some form of like psychopath. I think she discovers that he's having an affair and then through that she discovers this huge web of like lies and really like awful behavior and things like that. And um, it just sounds really, really interesting. It kind of sounds like, like what would make the basis of a plot line for a psychological thriller. But this actually happened to this woman and it is her talking about like what happened and how she like moved on from it and all of those things and it just sounds really, really interesting. And I, it's just interesting. Like I think it would be a really, really fascinating read. The next book I marked as to read is Friend Request by Laura Marshall. Now this one I actually got an email about from NetGalley. I'm like promoting this book and I did request it and I was denied. But I do still really want to read it because it's a psychological thriller about... So I believe when she was younger she befriended this girl, the main character, and they became like really like good friends and then obviously it's years and years later and I think she gets a friend request from this now woman on Facebook but the woman had gone missing like when they were teenagers she'd been got, gone missing and had like never been heard from and then obviously now that she got this friend request from her like how like what's happened I don't know I'm gonna read it and find out hopefully. Next we have The Life She Was Given by Ellen Marie Wiseman. So this was recommended to me on um, Goodreads by Samantha Osborne and it is set in a depression era circus. That was basically enough for me. I don't really know too much about it apart from that. But I recently read Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen and I really, really enjoyed that book. Particularly the circus setting was something that I really loved about it. So I'm definitely interested to check out um, more books like in that setting. And I actually think this is a quite a recent release. So, but yeah, the circus thing, I'm just, I would love to read more circus books. The next two books I want to talk about are both books that I saw in a Goodreads blog post about books hitting shelves in the next seven days. If you've been watching this series of videos, then you know that I get a lot of recommendations from that post. The first of those is Two Roads From Here by Teddy Stein Kellner. And this one is a YA contemporary about like contemporary magical realism-ish, I guess maybe, about five really different teenagers who all have like a big decision to make about their futures and so on and so forth and they each get the opportunity I don't really know how but to see like both potential outcomes I'm really fascinated by stories with that kind of storyline like like I want that ability in my life so I don't know it just sounds really really interesting and it definitely intrigued me when I read it in that post. The second one from that post is A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting by Joe Ballerini. I don't really know anything about this except that it's a middle grade book about babysitter and monster hunting. If you didn't know, The Babysitter's Club was basically my complete and total jam as a kid. Like I adored Babysitter's Club and this has got monster hunting in it and it just sounds like a really good time and it actually really sounds like something that my niece would probably love and I should probably recommend to her but I am definitely intrigued by this and I do want to try more middle grade. I keep saying this and like not really doing it but this could potentially be something that I try out. Next I have Shooter by Carolyn Pignat. This one I actually saw on Richard's Book Nooks channel and this is just a YA story that surrounds a school shooting and it is about five really different students who all get stuck together um, in the um, like a boys toilet I think during like the lockdown because there's a shooter in the building and at first I think they might think that it's like a drill and then they'd realize that no there actually is like a shooter in the building. Um, I'm sure this will be a really difficult read given the subject matter but it does sound really really interesting and I definitely am into books with this kind of premise because it's obviously a very current and relevant issue in today's society um, and it's definitely something that I would like to read. 
The next book I marked as to read is The Best Kind of Magic by Crystal Sestari. This one I actually saw over on Lisa from Books and Smiles channel. I absolutely adore Lisa. If you haven't checked out her channel, then please do because I totally love her. And she was talking about this book and the premise sounds amazing. So this is about a girl who I think like all of her family are witches, but it skipped her generation. Like she's not actually a witch, but she does have one ability. And that ability is to see everyone's perfect match like who they're like meant to be with but she can't see it for herself like she doesn't know who her own perfect match is but she can see everyone else's and then she falls in love with this boy but she can see that she's not his perfect match like his perfect match is somebody else so i don't know where it's going to go from there but i'm interested to find out because that sounds like a totally good time well not for the main character because i don't know if she's going to end up with the guy that she wants but we'll see the next book is another one of those situations where I wanted to read this book for a really long time and I just came across it on Goodreads and realized I'd never marked it as to read and that is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This is another um, book about a girl who I believe is, I don't know if she's a lesbian, I think she's a lesbian but she's definitely interested in females and her parents are both killed I think and she's actually relieved like kind of when they die that they'll never have to know that she's interested in girls and I believe she gets shipped off to live with like an aunt or something and it's a really conservative like family but obviously she likes girls that's all I really know about it but I've been really interested in it for a long time and um I just really want to read it at some point the next book I want to talk about is The Disappearances by Emily Bain Murphy. Now, I first saw this on Twitter and it was a like a book aesthetic that someone had posted that first drew me to it. Um, I will try and post the aesthetic here if I'm able so you guys can see like kind of what drew me in. Um, that's what drew me in and I had like a quick skim of the synopsis and it sounded really interesting but confusing. It's about a girl whose mother dies and then she has to go, her and her brother move to the small town where her mother grew up but in this town things disappear but I don't really understand like what disappears or like how it disappears but she's trying to figure out like why it disappears and all of that and like thinks maybe that her mother had something to do with it I don't really know but it just sounds really interesting and this book said it board just really spoke to me and can I just say I don't understand how people do book aesthetic boards like I'm so impressed like I just think it would be such a difficult thing to do so kudos to you if you post book aesthetic boards because they're so so good and I just I don't even understand how people manage to do that but this is one that, that definitely intrigued me and the last book I marked as to read is Here Lies Daniel Tate by Kristen Terrell. Now this one I saw again on Twitter and it was in a thread about underhyped books recommendations. And this is a psychological thriller I believe and it's about a boy went missing like years ago when he was like 6 years old or something. And it's been like 10 years or I'm not exactly sure how old the person is supposed to be now but he returns. And... I think we know as the reader that the person who's returned is not actually the boy who went missing, that it's a con artist. So that just sounds really, really interesting. And I've seen this book come up a bit since I first saw it in that um, underhyped books recommendation. And it just, it sounds really interesting and like something that I would enjoy reading. So those are all of the books that I marked as to read in the month of June. I would love to know if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts, or if you're excited to pick them up, or any other books that I didn't mention here that you're really excited to pick up, because I love recommendations, if you couldn't tell. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.